Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today we've got our monthly score roundup video for you, this being for last month, the month of May. We reviewed 10 games last month, so this will cover all of those games and we'll go from the game that got the lowest score up to, of course, the game that got the highest. Now, some big games came out last month that we didn't officially review. We didn't give them a score, but we did performance reviews on them instead, so they won't be in this video. I'm talking about your Bioshocks, Borderlands, XCOMs, but I will put the links to those performance review videos in the top pinned comment, as well as the links to all 10 reviews from this particular video. Okay, with all that said, let's get started. Coming in at number 10 for the month then, we had Oddworld Munchies Odyssey, which is of course a HD remaster of the 3D platformer that came out on the original Xbox. Now I said in my review I'd never played an Oddworld game before, I never had a PlayStation or an Xbox, I had other consoles at those times, so it was interesting to play this game for the first time in 2020. I found the game to be enjoyable, I liked the mechanic of the two characters having to work together to solve particular environmental puzzles, and I also liked the fact that they had their own particular strengths that they needed to call upon to solve said puzzles. The game also runs at 60 frames per second for the most part, and the higher resolution and of course the change to high definition means that while the game still does look its age to be fair, it looks lovely and crisp. What I didn't enjoy so much was the repetitive nature as you got further into the game, and also there were certain parts where it felt that death was inevitable, and even the best option at times, with you just wanting to get the death out of the way so that you could start a particular task with full health. A decent game overall though, and fans of the franchise will love having it on a modern console I'm sure, and it got a switch up score of 70%. The next game is a game called Spirits of the North. This sees you taking on the role of a fox who is being guided by the spirits of the Northern Lights in a world that was heavily inspired by Iceland. This played very similarly to games like Journey or Rhyme or even Abzu, whereby you had to solve simple environmental puzzles to try and keep moving forward. You need to find spirits which you can then put into stone relics and these will change something about the environment which will ultimately help you to progress and overcome an obstacle. Now looking at the game from a distance, it looks particularly striking with beautiful colours used to really convey a calm and serene landscape. On closer inspection, they don't hold up quite so well and are particularly blurry in handheld mode as well. The controls were okay, although they were a little clunky and you never felt as though the fox was quite as nimble or moved with the fluidity that you would expect of that animal. Plus there were some odd gameplay choices later in the game, with the last two chapters in particular not being as enjoyable as the rest of it. With all that said though, it was still an enjoyable experience and it got a switch up score of 73%. Next we have the fantastically titled Void Bastards, this one being reviewed by Mark. This is a first person roguelite which included a nice upgrade mechanic and had a real British sense of humour. He felt that this game wasn't too tough even with that roguelike element in mind, had a decent mixture of weapons, the interesting space setting and also the strategy of choosing which ship you wanted to try and raid next. There is no multiplayer which is a real shame but even with this in mind he really enjoyed it and it got a switch up score of 80%. The next game was Ministry of Broadcast. This is a platform game with a pixel art style and sees you taking on the role of Orange who is being forced to take part in a deadly game by a totalitarian state. Sounds very much like a mixture of George Orwell's 1984 and The Running Man as well. This was one of Mark's reviews and he enjoyed the platforming and felt that the music created a really good atmosphere. He also really enjoyed the writing behind the game as well. It evokes memories of things like the original Prince of Persia or Flashback or Out of This World, those sort of games, and does share some of the frustrations that those particular games had in terms of some deaths that feel a bit cheap as you're learning what to do. It's also quite a short game too. All in all though, this got a switch up score of 82%. Next up was Hatsune Miku Project Diva Megamix. 
I reviewed this one and although I'm a big fan of rhythm games and have played plenty of them over the years, I'd never played one from this series. It did take me a while to get used to as I'd never played a rhythm game where the prompts fly in from different parts of the screen. And for this reason I found it more difficult than most other rhythm games I'd played in the past. But once you get past this, it's actually a very enjoyable experience. The game is a celebration of the series history and includes over 100 songs, although only 10 of them are new for this particular game. There's the classic mode as well as a new mix mode which uses the motion sensing in the Joy-Cons and to be honest I didn't find this mode responsive enough to be fun. Now I did say in the review and I will reiterate now it may be because of the Joy-Cons they're not the greatest invention ever let's be fair but for whatever the reason it just didn't seem to respond as much as it should. Now I'm not the biggest fan of the Vocaloid music but even with this in mind I still found this game a lot of fun and fans of the series I'm sure will love it. It got a switch up score of 83%. The next game was Fury Unleashed and this was written by a good friend of the channel Dave Morish. This again was a roguelike game which used a hand drawn art style and was set inside a comic book. Quite interestingly the game used its theme of the comic book to explain why there was procedural generation with the writer suffering from creative difficulties. You have to make your way through the pages of the comic and can play in co-op as well which was great all the while trying to find upgrades and defeat bosses to move on to the next book. This was high octane fun and although sometimes the environments could start to look a bit samey, it was one we very much enjoyed and it got a switch up score of 84%. Next there was Bug Fables The Everlasting Sapling which again was written for us by Dave Morish and this time he found himself reviewing a turn based RPG. Now this game was heavily inspired by the original Paper Mario the one on the Nintendo 64 and to some extent its sequel The Thousand Year Door. So for those fans that are maybe a little disillusioned as to where the series has gone since this game may well be for you. When I say heavily inspired, I'm talking very heavily inspired. If you look at the art style, you'll see striking similarities and it also uses the same action prompts when attacking or defending yourself within the turn-based battles. That being said, it has used those borrowed elements and crafted a very good game out of them with a lovely humor, a beautiful art style and a tight battling mechanic. Some of its platforming sections when in the overworld view can be a little bit off at times and aiming certain weapons at this time can be a bit of a chore. But this is still a very good game and it got a switch up score of 84%. The next game was one reviewed by me and this was Atomicrops. Another roguelite, the third one this month, but to be fair they've all been very different experiences. This is a really interesting game, it's almost half farm sim and half twin stick shooter. You need to defend your farming crops against waves of enemies, taking them out using that twin stick mechanic and you use the money that you earn from growing the crops to buy better weapons or seeds to make more money and repeat the cycle. There are four biomes around your farm which you can go into and explore, obviously the risk of death then increases but so does the reward. I found this game really enjoyable, feeling that it was quite a unique take on the roguelite genre. I will say there were some elements I didn't enjoy as much, such as the weapon breaking system between days and the fact that you could still be attacked by enemies whilst waiting for the first wave to appear, I didn't really see the point of that, but even with this in mind I still kept coming back for more and this is always a sign of a good game when it comes to roguelites. This got a switch up score of 84%. The game that received the second highest score for the month then was a game called Hunt Down. This was a run and gun with really beautiful 16 slash 32 bit pixel graphics. It had a real 80s and 90s vibe about it, albeit mixed with a gang theme that evokes memories of the 70s movie The Warriors. This had an abundance of weapons for you to pick up, a nice cover system and three different characters to choose from too. Whilst not the toughest game for the most part, it did have a couple of difficulty spikes 
which could lead to some frustration, but this is still a fantastic game and it got a switch up score of 89%. And the highest scoring game for the month then was Ion Fury. This is effectively a Duke Nukem sequel all these years later, and it includes everything that made that game so good. Well, apart from Duke Nukem, obviously. It has the same humour, uses the same engine, has very similar controls, although I will say that many people were disappointed it didn't include the option to invert the Y axis, although I have heard that this is going to be patched into the game at some point. It ran at 30 frames per second, but bizarrely, if you entered the Konami code, you could get it to run at 60, albeit not a stable 60. It had some great boss fights, but got particularly difficult near the end, and got a switch up score of 91%. So there you have it, another month of reviews rounded up. And as I said, I will put the links to all of these reviews in the top in comment if you want some more information. And I will also put the links to the performance reviews in there as well if you want to have a watch of those. A quick thank you as always to our Patreons for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.